liberty lovers and welcome to the liberty mike podcast broadcasting from an undisclosed location in the heart of dixon i am michael and i am here with liberty larry how's it going i'm doing okay how are you pretty good 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 so we got some uh we got an election coming up that's what i heard and i heard that the, the, it's it's done snuck up on us man yeah man next tuesday <laughs> yeah next like, tuesday it really has snuck up like yeah so for those in the area um the Baldwin County Libertarian Party will be having a election watch party. I would say, like, check the Baldwin County Libertarian Party Facebook page to be sure. But the plan is that uh, it'll be at uh, the Agave um, Tequila Bar yeah. in Fairhope, Fairhope yeah. next Tuesday. Yeah. Like, I don't know, 6, 7 o'clock. I don't know. When, that, when that, that idea, yeah, something like that. So come join us. Yeah. It's going to be fun. A bunch of the candidates are going to be there. Hopefully yeah. we'll get to, you know, watch some good results roll in. Yeah. We got a bunch of libertarian candidates on the ballot this year, too. We do. Um, and I know most of them. So yeah. I, I even yeah. feel comfortable voting for them. <laughs> I, I was going to say, I can even <laughs> vouch for them. I feel like they're <laughs> yeah. they're good, solid people. <laughs> yeah. Um, so yeah. that'll be that'll be fun. Uh, yeah. And we'll see how it goes. Um, we're, we're shooting for wins all over. That's right. Absolutely. Got, got to get that ballot access, man. I'm not betting on it, but we're, <laughs> we're <laughs> yeah, right. That's the goal. <laughs> um, so, uh, yeah, just pay attention to what's going on. Like, there's all kinds of weird stuff going on in the media. Um, you got uh, the Paul Pelosi attack that's being s- somehow switched into. It's because of Republican attack ads <laughs> yeah. uh, in the elections that that's why... Um, very strange situation occurred. I, I'm <laughs> right. not even going into that because it's. Uh, yeah, I don't want to speculate, but I'm not buying what the media is selling. No, no. Let me just say that. Like I, I just, I have a hard time believing that anybody could have broken into the Pelosi well, household. And the the um, pictures sure that I like saw, a, the windows were broken from the inside. Yeah, like someone was trying too. to break out i mean i don't know if that was for real but yeah i saw the same thing yeah I, like when i first saw that picture i'm like wait a minute yeah <laughs> glass is on the wrong side here um so, but you know it could have been a fight inside and it could have got pushed into yeah. the thing or oh, who knows. absolutely um but it yeah it does there's some there's some oddities but the main thing i think is like they have got to have a pretty good security system i would think there yeah um yeah and the I just idea can't that, imagine some that guy some randomly. lunatic just like got onto their property and then broke into their and then house into the house yeah yeah like seems like once he entered the property like things would start happening yeah <laughs> right yeah <laughs> there would be some kind of alert there's some guy sitting at a desk watching a bunch of monitors you would almost think at yeah her place but whatever um but yeah, that's being turned into, well, it's because of the Republican uh, campaign ads and that they should pull them, Yeah, which I thought was really funny. Yeah. Right. Um, so yeah. And I, I was thinking about our last, um, our last podcast and there was something that I wanted to say specifically about the, not the media, but the media about the media. Yeah. Not the media that we were talking about, but the the media that covers what we were talking about. Yeah. The okay. movies and films and movies and films. Yeah. Um, yeah. Like critics, that type <laughs> yeah. of thing. TV series and so forth. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And um, if you go to, there's a few sites like Rotten Tomatoes as an example, um, where they have critic scores and audience scores. Yeah. And a lot of this stuff you will see um, huge disparities <laughs> between the critic score and the audience scores. Like where the critics score is in the 85 to 90 range and the audience score is in like the 35 to 45 range. Yeah. And you have to wonder how that happens. I mean, obviously the answer is that the critics just understand the media better. <laughs> I guess. I know it's one of those scores I'm going to take. Yeah. <laughs> like that I'm going to side with. But I do have an alternative alternative hypothesis. Okay. Um, the critics get uh like set visits and early access stuff and, mm. and things like that. I'm pretty sure. I I, I don't know that a hundred percent, but I'm pretty yeah. sure. I mean um, I would that figure the they would. Yeah. Um how else do you get your your critic your, your criticism, your yeah. critique yeah. uh out there, you know, before it hits before all the theaters it, and stuff. There's so forth, some you know? kind of access granted. Right. For sure. Um and uh and they don't want to lose it. Yeah. Yeah, you don't bite the hand that feeds you. Like if if some studio is giving you early access and a bunch of perks, you don't want to talk bad about their product. Yeah. 
Um, oh, yeah. Because they might not invite you back. Well, that and those those critics kind of hold a lot of weight with with those studios and whatnot. Like, I mean, if you um, I, I don't know. I mean, it just there's definitely a power structure there that kind of leans towards you know. Well, critics can make or break the studios, but um, I, I think that the I think that what we're seeing is the critics aren't being honest. Yeah, yeah. they're choosing their perks over their principles. Well, that I think I think a big part of it's that, but a big part of it is is I think they're just down with the message. Like, well, that might be it too. That they just they just agree with this message that's being put forth that the common folk don't really care for. Yeah, I'm not sh- Yeah, that that might be true. There's already a question of their principles anyway, so I I'm I'm yeah. just going to leave it there. But um I was thinking of how that relates to the, kind of what we do most yeah. of the time. And uh I would say that the same the same idea applies to like the White House press staff. Yeah. Oh yeah. Now now that's one where the power structure is completely like you go along you you get get with the program or you're not invited in here anymore. Right. And so um, the 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 people that report on the executive don't say bad things about the executive because they want the access. Yeah. Well, and, they have to have it. Like that is that's their yeah, that's their business. If they if they lose access, they lose their job. Exactly. Um, or they have to start covering other things, which isn't yeah. as prestigious. Yeah. Uh, but I, I think that that that's a huge part of why they report so favorably towards the administration. Yeah. Except for Trump, but um, yeah. even then, they're still reporting favorably about what the Pentagon's doing and what the intelligence agencies are yeah. doing, and so on. They so, were they were in favor of the deep state, as it were. Yeah. Yeah. Because they have six ways from Sunday to get back at you. Exactly. Right? As Schumer told us. Yep. Uh, and I, I think this, the same is true for the the pharma funded media. Um, yeah. Mainstream media, television media, is almost wholly supported. It seems like at this point by. Uh, yeah. Pharmaceutical. Companies. I know you don't watch a lot of TV, but no. I watch the. I try to catch the evening news at least a couple of times a week. Not not every, but just a couple of times, just to get the feelers out there and see what's going on. Mm-hmm. And let me tell you, like almost every commercial is a pharma commercial yeah. during the evening news. Like I mean, it's uh, very few <laughs> that aren't. Well, I did hear that supercut a while back where almost everything was sponsored by Pfizer. Like all these yeah. various news programs were sponsored by Pfizer. Yeah. Um, so it's just something to bear in mind, especially when we're looking back now as we're moving into these elections. Yeah. Um, and we're looking back at the records of the people that are running for office, that are incumbents running for office. And to think about um, how they and the media and the medical establishment all participated in lying to us for two years about COVID. Yeah. And you can make claims about how they, you know, there was a lot of unknowns and, and so forth. And there's truth in that, yeah. but they told us things that they knew to be untrue throughout there to try and get a particular response yeah. from the public. And it, and it worked in a lot of cases, I suppose. Well, I think it worked in the biggest way. And that was to get rid of Trump. Well, I mean, I think I, I don't think that that was. I'm not going as far as he participated in that stuff too, though. He, he did, didn't get a but pass. he was forced. Like, I mean, like I say, I'm not going as far as say COVID was created to get rid of Trump, no, b- or anything like that. But it was just seizing an opportunity. It was there was the opportunity arose, and they used it to beat him over the head. <laughs> well, it's something more than that too, because it's centralized power in more ways than we'd had power centralized before. Oh yeah. Especially when you look at the medical establishment. Yeah. Because there, there was a time where you had your family doctor yeah. and your family doctor mostly operated independently and they, you know, in order to keep their licenses and so forth, they had to keep up with stuff, participate in so many. I mean, at least when I worked on the ambulance, you had to get so many continuing education units every year to keep your license up and so on. Yeah. And uh, stay, stay I'm sure that, that has to be true for doctors too. I'm sure it is. Like that they there's and they have stuff they read that keeps them mm-hmm. in the loop and that type of thing. Yeah, but, and good doctors just do that anyway. Well, yeah. I mean, I would hope so. <laughs> yeah. So, but now everything that like the power has been centralized um, to a great degree, and protocols and so forth are and standards of practice are handed down from 
you know, these legislative bodies, essentially. Well, it's, it's top-down. Semi-legislative bodies. It's top-down medicine. It's, mm-hmm. you know, the, the uh, powers that be tell you what, what, what the protocols are and how to handle it. And, and doctors aren't really allowed to make decisions off what they think. Mm-hmm. Well, um, just, uh, just to remind everybody of what we were told yeah. that we needed to do. Um, all these groups, uh, government, media, and the medical establishment, um, pushed masks, mandatory masking, lockdowns, vaccine mandates, yeah, business closures, social distancing, all yeah. of these things. Yeah. And, and now the, the data is really coming out and they pushed it with no reason. I mean, yeah. not no reason. Like the, it, it's not. I guess it's not fair to say that there was no reason to say wear a mask, it, it might protect you. But that's not what they said. No. They said, well, and remember wear what they a mask, s- it, will, it will protect you. Yeah. And remember what they said first, by the way. Mm-hmm. Because first... Which was don't wear masks. Don't, don't do go anything. out and buy masks. They're mm-hmm. not going to do any good. Yeah. Uh, that was the initial message. Yeah. And then it flipped pretty quick when, you know... Well, and the funny part about that is that Fauci later admitted he was lying when he said that. Yeah. But he wasn't lying because he was actually correct. It was it was <laughs> it was an accidental it's funny, truth. It's funny how the truth <laughs> finds you sometimes. Yeah, like. An accidental <laughs> truth. Yeah. Um, and uh, so, and all of these things, they were so intent on limiting the spread of the virus that they didn't consider um, any of the other, as Fauci says, deleterious effects yeah. of the the actions that they took. And uh, so you see. Oh man, I, like I felt so bad for kids throughout, and oh, I man. I kept talking about it on the podcast. Um, but the all these effects that it was going to have on kids for people to be in masks all the time and to be uh, kept at home and not being able to socialize with other children and all that stuff. Yeah. Uh, and we're seeing it now. So you're seeing like stunted emotional development of young kids, speech impediments. I, as it turns yeah. out being able to see somebody else's mouth is a very important part of learning to talk. Yeah. Right. And also, uh, to develop emotionally. Yeah. Because facial expressions, it turns out that most of our language is actually (laughs) nonverbal. Right. (laughs) Um, so, or a lot of the meaning is portrayed in nonverbal ways. Yeah. Right. And, uh, and so these things have been lost. They're serious problems. It's going to be hard to make up for it. Um, I, I dread to see what this generation of people that were toddlers during this time are going to be as teenagers. Yeah. I don't know what kind of effects it's going to have, but I think that this, there's been some psychological damage to most that will be hard to be undone. Yeah. Um, and then when you talk about the lockdowns, business closures and, um, the coercive vaccine mandates, yeah. So which hasn't not, completely went away by the that's way. That's true. Um I mean it's not government enforced anymore, but there is still plenty of businesses that are holding on to that. Mm-hmm. Uh, yep, absolutely true. And those um the side effects of those that again we talked about on the podcast as the data started coming in, um mostly psychological again, but uh substance abuse issues, um increase in suicides, domestic violence, child abuse. Yeah. Kids really had a rough time through this. Um, you know, higher rates of uh, depression, poverty, debt. And, of course, the inflation issues that we're dealing with right now yeah. is a result of them trying to fix the problem that they created by making Printing lockdowns and business closures anyway. Yeah. So, yeah, you, you can't take away people's only income and then not do anything about it because people get upset about being poor. <laughs> right. So then People they, aren't just going to sit in their house and starve to death. Right. Uh, <laughs> it's not China. Yeah. Yet. Yet. (laughs) And so they sent out a whole bunch of money, and now we're seeing the effects of that now. They created a bunch of money out of nothing. Now there's more money than goods, and here we are. And that is the, the, as far as the midterms go, like, that's the top, like, when you poll people, that's their biggest concern is inflation. Mm -hmm. Um, And it's a direct result of what we did during COVID. Yes. Um, Like, it's important to draw that. Among other things. But, I mean, it's important to draw that line. Because I talk to people all the time and they don't make that connection that, 
oh yeah, we did just print all of this money. <laughs> yeah. And just to remind everybody, because I, I want to make sure that this is clearly nonpartisan. Yeah. It, this started with Trump. Oh, yeah. I mean, Biden, we saw the bulk of the inflation under Biden because it finally caught up. Yeah. But it, Trump's policies started this. Oh, Biden right. continued those policies. But Trump's policies started this. This started with Trump. Oh, absolutely. He's the first one to start printing a whole bunch of money. Yeah, yeah. And um, and so he, he bears blame. He also is heavily responsible for the rushed vaccines. Yeah. Yeah, and he still takes pride in that, by the way. I know. Like, that's that's going to be an issue for him down the road electorally if he doesn't walk away from that. Yeah, so let's go back to the media, medical establishment, and government lies. Yeah. Um, many of which they were still telling us like a year ago. Yeah. Uh, the vaccines prevent infection. Yeah. The vaccines stop the spread. The vaccines mean you won't get sick. The vaccines mean you won't die. The vaccines mean you won't be able to give it to somebody else. Yeah. And I will, it just, it really irks me because so many people I knew at the time that were going to get the vaccine, like that was their reason was, mm -hmm. well, uh, it's not so much for me. I'm not as worried, but I've got a family member yeah. or I don't want to be the cause of, a, of giving it to somebody or spreading it. Mm -hmm. um, and while we didn't know for sure that that wasn't the case, like that lie coerced so many people into getting this thing. Yeah. Um, and I just don't believe the media. So I was skeptical, obviously, from day one. Mm -hmm. But but that lie there, that's to me, that was the, the biggest. Like that's the one that really just drove people. Yeah. My mom um, was recovering from chemotherapy treatment when the vaccines were widely available. Yeah. And she's told me that she was very upset with me for refusing to get the vaccine. Yeah. yeah. That not even for her would I get the vaccine and what kind of terrible son was I that I wouldn't do this for her yeah. to help keep her safe. She's changed her mind about this now. Yeah. Right. But, <laughs> but uh, at the time it was, it was a real issue to her. Yeah. And people forget like, it, I mean, it seems like it was so long ago now, but it really wasn't. I mean, we're talking less than two years ago mm -hmm. um, that, that we were dealing with this situation, but um, like it's, I, I don't know, but that lie is the one that really gets me the most. Like, yeah. And just to be clear, because they, they've tried so hard to, to obfuscate this, uh, that those claims about not being able to get sick and, um, not spreading it to others weren't true from the very beginning. Even yeah. the initial COVID strain, yeah. that, they're, they shift the blame now. Like, Oh, well we got all these new strains and they, they're resistant to the vaccine. Well, no, it didn't even work on the first the yeah. initial, the, what, the alpha. Yeah. Whatever. Was it alpha? I, think I don't it was think. Alpha. I don't um, remember. I was trying to think they called it like the native strain or something oh, like that. Maybe. I can't remember. Yeah. But, I think I've heard it referred to as alpha, but I could be wrong. Yeah. Um, I'm sure that they use that too, but it was, it was never true. Yeah. It was never true. And, um, now we're seeing as a result of this coercive vaccine campaign, actually I should bring up another point here. Um, in terms of their lying. Uh, they were also lying about alternative treatments. Yes. Ivermectin does seem to work if it's given at the right time and in and, and the right doses. Uh, high level steroids yeah. do seem to work if they're given at the right time. Um, vitamin C infusions yeah. do seem to work if they're given at the right time. Yeah. Uh, all of these things are alternative treatments to the vaccine, but they denied every single one of them because they can't get emergency authorization for a vaccine if there are alternative treatments. Yeah. This was really just a great big money grab. Yeah. And I know that a lot of people are looking for these like deep, dark theories as to why, um, you know, the government wanted vaccines in everybody's arms so they could put trackers in or who knows. I mean, <laughs> I, I've heard some doozies. <laughs> yeah. Um, but it, it turns out that it might actually be like far more banal than that and just, just be money. Just follow the money. That, that age old, just follow the money. Yeah. There is nothing that sells your product better than a government mandate. Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> Especially when the government's going to just buy it from you and give it away for free. Yeah. I mean, think about it from a business perspective. You can't make people buy your product. Yeah. But the government can. Yeah, they can. And, and they, in this and, case, the government just bought the product. Yeah. 
and then gave it to you. <laughs> well, well yeah. yeah, with the they bought it with the money they stole from you in the first place, and then they gave it to you. Yeah, still though. <laughs> and they had to have a, pay a bunch of administrators to do that. So there's like which, a <laughs> which does which does explain why the force because and it's a question I kept asking through all of this is like because I just couldn't wrap my head around why there was so much pressure and force from every angle, the government, the media, everywhere that you absolutely have to get this or you're the worst human being in the world. Um, and it may just go back to just that, that mm -hmm. they needed everybody to get it because they this was a big money grab for the pharma companies. And if everybody didn't get it, it messed up the system. Well, it, yeah, if everybody didn't get it, then you have a control group. Yeah. And you can show well, damages. There's, well, there's that too. Yeah. Uh, and if you'll remember, we reported on this podcast also that – um, it was only like six months after they did the initial um, testing that they actually called back the uh, placebo group from their their various experiments yeah. and said, hey, you didn't get the actual vaccine. You want it? Yeah, yeah, which is unheard of, by the way. Yeah, which completely destroys the experiment. It's not an experiment anymore. Yeah. If you don't have a control group, you cannot measure results. Yeah. And I think that that was, that was the intent. Yeah. I think there's something to that, for uh, sure. So they, yeah, they couldn't have known the claims that they couldn't have known yeah. the claims that they made, and now we're seeing huge spikes in. And I've been seeing statistics that sometimes suggest like two to five times normal levels of reporting of these various um, diseases or injuries well, or what have you. There's some of them are to the point that they can't, like the media can't just ignore it. Yeah. Like, especially a lot of the stuff that's showing up in children, mm -hmm. like children, like all of a sudden with heart disease, yeah. like that something's wrong there. Like this. No, no. It's always been the case. We just didn't really report on it before. That's what, uh, that's well, one of the things that we're uh, hearing. But man, there's other well, stuff I too. Thought, I thought it was global warming, man. I'm, I'm just on the wrong page here, yeah. man. My, my, oh, I saw a meme the other day, which is um, a doctor listening to a patient's chest and he, He's uh, he said, "I'm sorry, it'll only take a minute. I'm just looking for any signs of global warming." Yeah, <laughs> I thought right. it was funny. Um, but uh, you know, we're seeing spikes in miscarriage and yeah. uh, miscarriages and ovarian dysfunction, um, heart attacks, Bell's palsy, Guillain Barre, uh, multiple sclerosis um, is way up. Uh, embolisms, uh, which is when air bubbles get in, in your blood vessels and they can travel to your brain or your heart or your lungs and cause some damage. Um, and, uh, breast cancer specifically, although other cancers as well. Yeah. Now, some of these things we know are related to vaccines and not just the, the COVID vaccines like, uh, Bell's palsy and Guillain-Barre, yeah. um, are, are connected to many different vaccines. Um, but they are also connected to the COVID vaccines. Yeah. Um, the heart attacks, um, I mean, it's yeah. pretty certain at this point, there seems to be a clear link between the spike protein and uh, myocarditis and other heart damage. Yeah. Um, now, some studies show that there's higher incidence of myocarditis after a COVID infection than there are after the COVID vaccines. Um, but uh, studies are also showing that, that you're more likely to have a uh, symptomatic uh, myocarditis if it's, uh, if it was the vaccine and not an infection. So there's the severity seems to be worse if it's vaccine induced instead of infection induced, yeah. but it's the spike protein that the vaccine causes your body to make, to yeah. manufacture it. It's not, apparently it's not good for your heart. Yeah. It's not, it's not good for you at all. <laughs> yeah. Right. <laughs> um, so, uh, now I think the miscarriage and, and the ovarian dysfunction, you were getting some reports of um, of some weird, uh, reproductive issues, um, when the vaccine started be, to be given at the beginning, oh, yeah. they were dismissed Oh yeah, completely. Like, but you were a conspiracy theorist if you brought that up. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I think you still are. Yeah. But there definitely is higher incidence of this stuff. Yeah. Yeah. The numbers bear it out. Yes. Um, now some of the things on this list, like, uh, multiple sclerosis and the, the various cancers and so forth, I think those are most likely related to people not having gone in for regular checkups, yeah. uh, during the COVID for fear of going into a doctor's office during COVID. Right. Um, so that was scare tactics and lockdowns that caused that. Yeah. Um, but it's still just as damaging. Like, oh, you know, you could have had two if you're, years if you're of untreated of, cancer. Yeah. If you're one of those people, yeah, you got screwed here. Mm-hmm. Um, so I just 
I just I just want to remind people that you heard it here, yeah, over and over again. E- even back when when we were in lockdowns and I was doing this podcast by myself most of the time, I kept saying over and over and over again that the claims that they're making about the vaccines they could not possibly have enough data to know. Yeah, they cannot make the claim that it is safe and effective because they can't have they haven't done enough testing to to be able to answer that question those yeah. questions. And I kept saying it over and over again, and we got stuff taken off of YouTube, and we got flagged all over the place for making these claims that the vaccines maybe weren't what they claimed they, that they were. Yeah. And um, now I'm going to play you this clip from the EU commission that was looking into this and had some representative from Pfizer uh, there answering questions. And they asked her um, about uh, if the if the company knew that, the, um, that it wouldn't, prevent infections at the time that they started distributing them. Yeah. And this is what she had to say. I'll see it. Um, regarding the question around, um, did we know about stopping the immunization before um, it entered the market? No. Uh, these, um, you know, we had to really move at the speed of science to really understand what is taking place in the market. And from that point of view, we had to do everything at risk. I think our Dr. Boudla, even though he's not here, would turn around and say to you himself, uh, if not us, then who? Um, Dr. Boudla actually felt the importance of what was going on in the world. And therefore, as a result of that, we actually um, spent two billion dollars at risk uh, of self-funded money from Pfizer to be able to manufacture as it well first of all research develop and manufacture at risk to be able to make sure that we were in a position to be able to help um, with the pandemic and uh, and I think that's why I feel very good when a recent paper um, from the Imperial College stated that in the first year of the rollout of, of vaccines um, we saved uh, four million people. We are so lucky we have those great humanitarians at Pfizer <laughs> that started uh, distributing a vaccine that they didn't know if it was effective or not at the time that it went to market. I don't know if you caught it. She's, they were moving at the speed of science. Yeah, whatever the hell that means. <laughs> yeah. I, this, is the, this, this is a term that's come up a few times uh, over the last couple of years. And it doesn't make any sense. Science actually moves pretty slowly. Yeah, well, <laughs> I don't think they know what science is. Well, I think They keep you using these right words, <laughs> but I don't think you know what they mean. <laughs> keep using this word. I do not think it means what you think it means. <laughs> yes. Um, so the, I, I find it really interesting that she, they, they put down two, was it million or billion of their own? I thought she said million, but I'm... I think I, she did too. Yeah. Um, I, I didn't look I, up the profits of these companies before we got on there, but uh, yeah. that th- their input of their own money that they put at risk yeah. here is dwarfed by the profits and revenues oh, that they made over the last question. couple of years. And they, I, I think the idea that they um, put it, uh, that they risked this money by research and development and manufacture and so forth is absurd because they put out a product that they didn't know if it worked. Yeah. Well, and it really irks me because they want to take this thing where, where they're like, oh, well, we were just trying to help with the pandemic and we mm-hmm. saved all these lives. Oh, yeah, that number. OK, so there's yeah. eight, eight billion people on this planet. They claim to have saved four million. I don't know how many excess deaths we have from other factors at this point, but yeah. Uh, well, now that's and but lockdowns and things aren't necessarily their fault. I'm not. Gonna... No, no, no. But but what irks me is that that they're they're proclaiming that this vaccine was just that that it was the right thing to do. But at the same time, just like we talked about earlier, like the ivermectin and all of these other things that were that were at least worth exploring weren't even allowed to be mentioned. Yeah. Um. So don't don't give me the whole like oh we we're just trying to do help with the pandemic and do what we can. No, you weren't because if you were, you would have at least explored these things. Um, if you really meant to help people. No, they were seeking a windfall and they got it exactly. And now uh, the FDA, I guess it is uh, FDA or CDC, uh, can't remember. Um, government agency. Yeah, some government agency. <laughs> Uh, has now placed the uh, vaccine on the recommended list for children. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, down to five, I think. I, don't... I think. I think that's the last I had heard. But 
there's a, and of course there, I think that there are no states at this point. Um, both Louisiana and California had initially put the COVID vaccine on the requirement for public school. Mm -hmm. Uh, but they've both taken it off since then. Yeah. And so I don't think that there are any... That's the next push. Yeah, I don't think that there are any states at this point that are actually requiring the vaccine for school children uh, to attend public school. Thank goodness. But there's another reason for it, though, again, because just like they needed no alternative treatments to to get emergency use authorization and get the liability shield to put it out there in the first place, in order to maintain the liability shield they have to get on the recommended list for children. Oh. So if they're on the recommended list for children, then they fall into the liability shield again. And obviously wow. with all of these various <laughs> effects that are coming up from the vaccines, there's no they way. They need it. <laughs> there's no way they could put it out there without that liability shield. Oh, absolutely. Um, which would make for an interesting case if um, if they didn't actually put that on the on the children's list because then you may end up with a situation where Pfizer and these companies start pulling it. Yeah. Wouldn't that be great? Wouldn't that be interesting? Yeah. Yeah. Um, it, it would be interesting to see what happened. It would be interesting to see, you know, what's interesting is um, there are alternative vaccinations that other countries develop that I hear nothing about. Yeah. And yeah. before they took away uh, RT from me, yeah. uh, they used to talk about on their program, um, the, the Russian vaccine, yeah. which is a traditional vaccine. They yeah. kind of rushed it out there, but yeah. um, it's a traditional vaccine. And there were actually a bunch of people that traveled to Russia to get that vaccine. And I haven't heard how that a lot of out. side effects yeah. from this. Yeah, It'd be interesting to see kind of how the, the Russia country is doing as far as the side effects and get some numbers. I know, mm-hmm. I mean, China good. has their own set of vaccines too. Yeah. Yeah. China's a whole nother animal though, because they've got that zero COVID policy right yeah. now and they've kind of went off the rails, man. Yeah. Um, which kind of is, is a good point to make here. Like, so we haven't went off the rails in that way. We did for a little bit, but we've kind of pulled it back, but it's just kind of, it's interesting that the most, one of the most, maybe the, I would say the most authoritarian re- regime in the world has leaned so hard into this COVID thing. Yeah. Um, I, don't, I don't think it's a coincidence. I think that they saw an opportunity to control their population mm-hmm. and they don't want to give it up. Yeah, you're probably right. I mean, it certainly has to be a factor. It has to be. Like, how could it not? Because Which is, it's hurting them um, economically. Mm-hmm. Like, it's it's like really... The whole world is hurt economically. Yeah, but um, like they're taking a particular hit with their COVID choices. That's true. Um, it also helps to keep people in poverty. Yeah. Uh, for a, a central government to keep people in poverty is is advantageous. Yeah, yeah. Um, makes the people more reliant on you as yeah. a government to, well. to provide for them. And uh, I think that there that's a, a good point to make as why maybe in the United States they're so unwilling to let this thing go. Yeah. Um, there are still states that are locking places down and, yeah. you know, and so forth. Um, so... So then uh, you sent me, um, well, you didn't send me an article. You sent me a picture <laughs> of the cover page yeah. uh, of an article. I forget what it was called. What was it called? Oh, crap. Um, something like, uh, we should uh, forget about this and move on. <laughs> that, that wasn't it. Um, um, let's declare an end. Let's, let's declare a pandemic amnesty. Ah, uh, um, yes. We need to forgive one another for what we did and said, um, when we were when we were in COVID darkness, mm-hmm. yeah. And so then I sent you a whole bunch of questions about what the hell they were talking about, um, mm. and uh, and then I just read the article, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> uh, which was actually pretty uninteresting. But um, I did pull a quote from it because I think it's important to address the to address this issue. Yeah. I mean, there were some things that they were saying that I agree with okay. um, that. You know, especially in the closing when they were saying um, we need to stop worrying about who to blame and and worry more about what to do to repair the damage that's been done. And I, yeah. I agree with that, although I don't think that we should forget who to blame. Well, no, and that's that's kind of the point of this whole podcast. Is yeah. <laughs> midterms are next week and we shouldn't forget about this. Yeah, re- go look up your politicians and what they were doing about COVID. Yeah. 
Um, and if it was anything uh, short of uh, Christy Nome in South Dakota saying we're not doing a damn thing ever, period, the end, yeah. um, then you should maybe evaluate whether you really yeah. want that person See to See who else is on the ballot. Yeah. Um, and this seems like a, an inappropriate point for me to insert something that I always say about voting, which is please, please, please look up the people on the ballot Go to their website, see what they stand for. If you go in to vote and all you know about the candidate is what is on the ballot, you should not be voting. Yeah. Or what TV told you. Well, that's probably true too, but at least you have something that way. Yeah. Um, so you don't get a good picture that way, but you know, whatever. (laughs) Uh, so she was talking about amid the uncertainty and unknowns of COVID, um, quote, Getting something right had a hefty element of luck, and similarly, getting something wrong wasn't a moral failing, end quote. Completely, I could not disagree more with this, because I think the question is a moral one. Yeah. And the the question is really about what power you have over the activities of other people. Yeah. Um, This was a complete disregard. The things that they were doing was a complete disregard to um, personal freedom, to bodily integrity to individual a, sovereignty, man. Yeah. Like that has kind of a weird connotation. So I was trying not to use that, but, but, but it's true though. But yeah. Um, but p- the ability of people to make their own choices about their lives, to do their own risk assessments and determine what they think is best for them. Absolutely. And act on that. Yeah. And, uh, so I think that the, I think that our answer to do nothing, yeah, to not, do lockdowns to not do school closures to not do and i'm opposed to public schools too but um well, to it, not do vaccine mandates and the various coercive techniques to try and get people to get vaccinated um mask requirements all of that stuff uh even if all those things had been effective which the data shows that none of them were yeah. but even if they had been effective we'd have still been right to be opposed to them absolutely because and, that that is the moral question it's yeah. not even if they had been, if they had been right that doing all these things helped protect more people than it didn't, yeah. they still were on the wrong side of the moral question. So yeah. it is in fact a moral failing. All of these things that they were wrong about, yeah. and it wouldn't have mattered how the virus turned out. It was still wrong and a moral failing. Yeah, and they pushed it so long after we knew what the virus was. That's true, but not even relevant. I yeah. mean, I, I, I yeah, really I want to, to hammer in this point that the that the question of morality, um, the people that were on the side of freedom and allowing people to make their own choices were right no matter what the virus had done. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I, I, I agree. Mm-hmm. But, you know, it, this, it, it just tells you that there was, there was an agenda here from the beginning. Mm-hmm. And, and I do think it was a money grab by the, by the pharmaceutical companies. Yeah, and still is. They're yeah, still grabbing yeah. it's not It's not over. <laughs> Um, so in light of all this, I did want to just very briefly, um, mention, uh, the Russia, Ukraine stuff. Okay. Because just like in the COVID, um, during the, the, during the COVID years. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> it oh, just gives me a shiver. At least it's behind <laughs> us. Is it though? God, uh, I hope it is. <laughs> I, I think that I do think that we're finally past this, but. Uh, because people aren't buying in anymore. It, yeah. it just goes to show, once again, that the way to fix these kind of authoritarian grabs by a government is to just not comply. Yep. Absolutely. There's more of us than there are of them. As yep. Jim Morrison said, they've got the guns, but we've got the numbers. There you go. Some of us have guns, too. But Yeah, right. Some of us have both. <laughs> but, the, but the point remains. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and uh, to the Russia-Ukraine stuff... It, this is something to pay attention to because this is the the way the media coverage works on this is also propagandistic. Yeah. Uh, now, if you start reading um, information coming out of both governments, the Russian government and the Ukraine government, they're both lying. Oh, absolutely. The neither government is telling the both, truth about what's going on. Both sides have an agenda to push. Yes, absolutely. Um, the the propagandistic part is that the. the the mainstream media in Western countries, in the U.S. specifically, is only putting out one set of lies. Yeah. <laughs> the lies from one side of this. And they're not making any attempt to kind of suss out the truth of it. They are just uh, blindly reporting whatever the Ukrainian government says. 
yeah. and uh, claiming that anything that the Russian government says is a lie and trying to prevent us from seeing any of it, which is really annoying to me because I liked RT. Yeah. Um, so the, the other part is that they are, the way they're presenting the Ukrainian situation, um, they're humanizing it in a way that they don't often do. Yeah. So um, they try and make it very human-centered stories about how terrible it is for various people within Ukraine. Um, they want you to empathize and sympathize with these people. They want you to identify with them. Now, if you can find reports about like what's going on in Yemen, yeah, you will not see the same kind of coverage. Well, and I've seen a handful, like every now and then PBS or one of these stations will do a little snippet on... Um, on Yemen, yeah, and um, it's 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 always cut and dry. The facts, there's no human interest stories, nothing. It's mm. it's just it has a different type feel than what you see with the Ukraine reports that you see at least one to two of daily. Yeah, and uh, it'll be something like um, the Saudi coalition um, is continuing. Um, it, it's. Uh, I don't know. It's battles with the Houthi rebels. Uh, so many people died. Um, this is having a, an effect on the country's ability to import needed goods. Yeah. Or, or so, like that's the yeah. best you'll get yeah. out of it. They don't actually talk to you about, they don't do human interest stories about starving children and so forth in Yemen. And yeah. the reason is because the U S government is involved in this war and not on the right side of it. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. And they don't want to draw your attention to that. But they do want to draw your attention to how Russia is involved on the wrong side of the Ukraine thing. Yeah. Um, that they're the invaders there. But we're the invaders in Yemen. Yeah. We're, it's the U.S. Navy that is blockading um, goods and, and uh, medicine, food and medicine from getting into Yemen. Yeah. Um, and they don't want you to look that deep. And yeah. so the, the reports are bland and very fact-based and uh, very non, un, unemotional, non-emotional, unemotional, I guess. Yeah. Um, whereas the reports in Ukraine are the exact opposite. They're, they're exactly to elicit emotions in you. Absolutely. And it's amazing how well this propaganda works. I mean, oh, yeah, all, it's all effective. You, all you have to do is look around and talk to people. I mean, you don't meet somebody that's not like on the side of Ukraine. Mm -hmm. And I get it because, I mean, they're, I, I'm not saying I'm against Ukraine. I'm just saying you don't hear that about Yemen. Yeah. Like you ask somebody about Yemen, you don't even, they don't even know <laughs> yeah. what it is, I what's mean, going on. There are a lot more people that know that Yemen is happening now than, than I, there I, were. Yeah. I remember yeah. two years ago talking about our war in Yemen and people going, what are you talking about? Yeah. Um, exactly. At least now people are like, oh yeah, no, I heard about that. A yeah. Bit, you know? yeah. Oh, aren't they attacking the Saudi oil pipelines or something? You'll yeah. at least hear, they'll at least know something. Something. Yeah. Um, but isn't it interesting again, that we're the, uh, the, the Saudis are the aggressors in that. And that's probably the most common thing that you'll hear people say when you bring up the Yemen thing is like, Oh, aren't they attacking Saudi oil Yeah, uh, yeah. refineries? Mm. Exactly. Yeah. No, no, <laughs> not really. Yeah. <clears throat> no, so. it's, it's, it's crazy, but it, all of this. So a lot of what we've talked about on this podcast, in fact, is really, boils down to we just don't have a good independent media. Um, we've got, I mean, there's podcasts and there's in, some stuff out there like that, but you're, you're, and I hate to use the word mainstream media because I think they're far from mainstream at this point. Mm -hmm. But the stuff when you But turn I don't on, like using corporate media because... It gives the wrong impression of corporations. Yeah. So, it, because that's Although, not... Although, I mean, I guess it's not necessarily, it's not necessarily the wrong impression, but... Well, it's, I mean, you, it's, I like to call it government media. I yeah. mean, because that's basically what it is. Mm -hmm. Um, but the stuff when you turn on the TV is what I'm getting at. Yeah. Um, it's, it's just, it, it's horrible. Like it's, it's just, there's, there's no, you're not getting good, legit information. It's basically just propaganda. Uh, Disney, NBC, the CIA broadcasting system, um, the Democrat broadcasting system, the Republican broadcasting system and whatever exactly. else. Yeah. And the uh, progressive left broadcasting system. That would be MSNBC, I think. Yeah. But if we had, a lot of these problems wouldn't even exist if we had a good, old-fashioned, solid media. Mm -hmm. um, so. Well, it, it, there's, uh, I mean, there's, there's strong economic reasons why things are going the way that they're going. 
Uh, it mostly comes down from government, though, because there is support for media that comes from government. Yeah. The other part of it is that the, the media, well, it's hard to make money in media. Um, what I miss is the days of like the Hunter Thompsons. Yeah. The days where there were people out there that were true. I mean, there are still, th yeah. this is still the case, but it's not, it's not as prevalent as it used to be. Th this used to be the business model yeah. and it's not anymore where there were independent journalists out there trying to chase down stories yeah. and they wanted to chase down the story because they could get the big scoop and sell it off to the various media companies and get it all over the place. If they, if they got there first. Yeah. Now media is essentially, um, let's look at Twitter and see what people are saying. And that's what we'll report. Well, and, it's that, but it's also what you talked about at the beginning of with the critics and stuff. Mm -hmm. It's the access thing Yeah, is these, these companies you can't, you don't want to burn your contacts. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Exactly. And all of your contacts are in the government. <laughs> yeah. that does seem to be mostly the case. Now, all these leaks that come out, there's very few, when there's a real leak that comes out, it gets treated like Edward Snowden. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> All these other leaks that come out, um, if you, if they're not chasing somebody down and throwing somebody into jail, then that leak a was a planned release. leak. Well, it's yeah. a press release. Yeah. 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 By another name. Exactly. <laughs> we can't officially give you this information, so we're going to... We're yeah. going to... intent. Ooh, whoops. Sorry, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> you just blew somebody's ears out. <laughs> yeah, I know. Um, <laughs> the microphone was in my way. <laughs> uh, then... Uh, then they want to give, they want this information to come out. They can't do it officially. And so it is quote unquote leaked, but it was a planned leak. Yeah, absolutely. And, uh, and that's where most of the information comes from. You're, it, it's absolutely right. And, and you don't want to, um, attack the government, which might make your contacts because having the contact is still important. Oh, absolutely. Like you're still the guy that gets to deliver the story. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and so you don't want to do anything that might jeopardize your relationship with that contact. Exactly. And if it's an, if it's an official leak, we'll yeah. say, yeah. um, then, uh, then doing any kind of independent reporting or editorializing too much could jeopardize uh, your relationship with that contact, yeah. have them go to somebody else or some other news agency to instead the, of you get the next one. Yeah. Yep. So, Oh, uh, wow. Well, uh, well, that's all I really have. Um, I do recommend people vote, but oh, please, please, please do some research first. Libertarian, straight party ticket. <laughs> ah, <God. laughs> I don't even know how to respond to that. Yeah. I'm so opposed to straight party voting, <laughs> straight ticket voting. Oh, gosh. Yeah. But, uh, but yeah, it, this, this is important. And I, th in terms of, um, Media misrepresentation again. They're, they're they are saying that it looks like it's going to be uh, a lot of Republican red uh, wave. Yeah, the the red wave. But I, I would say that historically, um, the polling on, um, especially like the MAGA type Republicans, yeah. is always lower than the than real what voting. they poll. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So uh, it may be worse. Then again, um, you know, I, this is going to, this is just going to be an interesting election. I think I, it, I, yeah. I'm, I, no matter what happens, the, the biggest election of our lifetime, <laughs> this one might actually be because there's so many questions about the integrity of elections Yeah, and there's so many indications that it's going to go, um, towards the right wing parties Yeah, and I'll be interested to see how close some of these races ended up, end up being and things like, like that Pennsylvania race with uh, Fetterman and Dr. Oz. And Oz, yeah. I don't know. I like the, the results of this are kind of going to affect what I think of how democracy is done in this, in this country. Yeah. I already have very little faith in it. Yeah. But it, it could confirm, um, or some of the weaknesses. Yeah. Uh, Yeah how how well planned the results already are oh yeah okay because I, I, I do think that the whole the whole uh republican democrat split is really just about divide and conquer that there's really no difference between those two anyway yeah um very little anyway nothing uh, nothing yeah. of substance yeah um it, it's just a matter of um 
it's not even a matter of how much of your money they want to steal. It's just about exactly where they want to place it. Yeah. Yeah. It's not. Yeah. And you're right. It's not even about the amount anymore. It's about how it's utilized. Yeah. There, yeah. neither of the major parties in this country are small government parties. There yeah. is no small government party with real representation in the U S. Yeah. Um, and, I, there are very few small government parties, period. Yeah. Uh, you have the libertarians, you have the constitutional, uh, constitutional, is it just the Constitution Party? I think or it's something? the Constitutionalist, is what I've always Some, heard. Yeah, it something like that. I mean, there's a few, but most, the the vast majority of parties that have any representation at all in the U.S. that that have a real like national platform of any kind are big government parties. Yeah, yeah. And uh, I just don't think that that can work. Yeah. Government is a body of people, usually notably ungoverned. Ungoverned. Yep. To to quote old. Uh, um, Captain uh, Malcolm Reynolds. I was going to say, that's Malcolm Reynolds, right? Yeah. yeah. So, uh, well, that's where we are, though. I, I hope that you go out and um, and you do some research and you figure out who the best person to vote for and pay attention to what they did during COVID. Yeah. Uh, because there was, no, there was no evidence to support any of the terrible things that they did, um, yeah. and they did them anyway, out of fear. Yeah. Or out of a power grab. doesn't really matter either way. That's they not the person that you, wrong. yeah. That's yeah. not the person that you want in charge. You don't want um, you don't want somebody in a leadership role that makes decisions out of fear, and you don't want anybody in a leadership role that makes decisions out of trying to accumulate more power. Yeah. Both of those things are bad yep. in a leader. So get rid of them all. Of course, yep. my 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 opinion is always at elections: never vote for an incumbent and vote for a third party whenever possible. Absolutely, strong so, advice. Yeah, so uh, we can end it there. Um, we're, we're trying to get back into our normal, like around 50 minutes yeah. time, which we've been really bad at. Ah, yeah, we'll get there. Or we won't. Who or knows? we won't. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's not like we have a script or anything, yeah. so there's really no control over how long these things run. <laughs> exactly. But, uh, we plan to be back next week. I'm trying the, to think of when Thanksgiving's coming up. So it's a I know couple of weeks we're, away. yeah, we're a few weeks away from yeah. Thanksgiving, but, um, we might have to, we'll have Alter to work some around things. that in yeah, some way. There, there's going to be some things altered. Like we're doing so. our family Thanksgiving early in the week. Are you? Yeah. Uh, we, we got some family coming down from yeah. New Jersey and uh, family coming over from Switzerland actually too. So we're. Maybe a Black Friday podcast. Yeah. Yeah. I'm good with that. Yeah. We can, we can talk about consumerism. Hey, That'd there you great. go. <laughs> um, Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, but we plan to be back next week, and on the uh, other side of the most important election of our lifetime. Right. <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I guess uh, that's what we'll end up doing, won't we? Mostly is just kind of reviewing the I'm, results. I'm sure. That, I'm sure All we'll right. need to. Well, yeah. yeah. I guess that'll be fun. Uh, that's cool. We have a plan then, yeah. <laughs> sort of, <laughs> uh, which is better than most weeks. <laughs> exactly. And um, in the meantime, you can follow us on Facebook. You can subscribe on iTunes, Podbean, YouTube, and or YouTube. Um, I, I really probably need to move us to some other video platform, too, because YouTube has been the worst about taking oh, stuff man, down. Oh, man, they hate us. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. um, so we, I may have to look into, like, Rumble or something Yeah. That that seems to be better about that kind of thing. Uh, hopefully, I don't have to do a, another format change. <laughs> All right. I'll have to see. Uh, but anyway, for now, at least, uh, iTunes, Podbean, YouTube. Um, you can uh, like us on Facebook, follow the page, um, you know, share our posts, tell your friends, like and comment and um, leave reviews and I use all kinds of ways that you can help. And it's always appreciated. And, uh, we will be back next week when we finally get this right. And in the meantime, try to stay free. Life short, live free. Ciao. Later.